Hi, I'm Dr. Janusz Dunecka. I'm the founder of the Intimate Revolution Festival, festival designed to end loneliness and bad sex. And today I want to talk with you about an important issue of our time, loneliness. In the first part of this talk, I want to talk about why we feel lonely, why this has come through evolution and also why it is such an important topic today in the 21st century. So I think first it is important to talk about what loneliness is. So in science, first uh, Richard Wise in 1973 wrote about loneliness that is loneliness is perceived social isolation, a gnawing chronic disease without any redeeming factors. Today it's a bit more nuanced. Loneliness is seen as the difference in the relationships we want and the relationships we have. But when you ask people about their experience of loneliness, it's often described as this tormenting feeling, as this anxiety, darkness, as a heavy burden, as a crushing weight on their shoulders. In medical terms, loneliness means stress, chronic stress that puts the body in a fight or flight mode. In the Joker 2019, Joaquin Phoenix, who went on to win an Oscar for his performance, said, I hope my death makes more sense than my life. This is another aspect, a speck of loneliness. Because when we lack connections, when we feel lonely, we start to question who we are. Without these connections, we miss the sense of belonging and we feel worthless and unimportant in this world. Or at least so it's often described. So why is there, why do we have this sensation of loneliness? There's this great paper by John Cacioppo, this one, I can really recommend the read. It's about the evolutionary mechanisms of loneliness. And he, here he has this hypothesis that loneliness is a symptom that loneliness makes us humans feel that we are missing connections, like we have hunger, when we miss food, when our body needs food, like we feel thirst when our body needs something to drink, needs some water. Humans, we are a cooperative species. We need each other to survive and even more, we need each other to thrive, to be really happy, to feel connected, to have this sense of belonging that gives our life's purpose. Because we humans are social animals. We are happy when we are together. But being, being better off in a group is not only a thing for humans. It has also been shown that the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, they die a lot faster when they're being isolated. By the way, Drosophila melanogaster, yes, those are these little flies that tend to appear when you leave out fruit too often. This was a study done by Ruan Wu in 2005. As it, more studies have been done by a number of scientists. Nonogaki 2007 showed that, that mice are more prone to develop obesity and diabetes too when isolated. Silva Gomez 2003 showed that in rats, the neural connectivity is being decreased when they're being isolated. It has also been more studies shown in monkeys, in rabbits, in piglets, that social isolation stresses our bodies and decreases our ability to function well. And I think it's quite apparent why in, any, uh, why in humans this is especially bad because we humans, we, when we are born, we need our community to take care of us. We need care, t 
takers to take care of us in this very vulnerable first days of our lives. So our first years were spent in total dependence of others. So cooperation is key. We are trained to be a cooperative spaces from the very beginning on. And I also like to think of loneliness in an evolutionary sense, how it could have helped us is imagine being a hunter like 15,000 years ago and suddenly you get separated from your group and suddenly you are alone and you realize that. And then it makes sense that your stress levels kick in. You get into this fight or flight mode. You're like, oh my God, have they maybe forgotten me on purpose? What was happening there? Why am I alone all of a sudden? What if a big tiger comes and eats me? I'm at the peril of dying right now. So I think this is how loneliness shows us to be like this evolutionary sign of, hey, you need connection, you need your group, you need to belong, you need to have your tribe. And it's not enough that your tribe is there because sometimes we're surrounded by a lot of people and still we feel lonely, still we feel disconnected. We don't just need to have people around us. We need to feel belonging too. We need to feel safe. We need to have these quality relationships where we know we will be supported and we can trust people. So loneliness has always been acting as a motivator for us humans to make contact with others and also to prevent us from acting asocially because being living on the social perimeter, it makes you an easier prey for predators. It makes it much easier to get killed by elements it helps you to gain um, better access to resources like food. There's also this other nice story. There's this scientist, Margaret Mead, and she asked her, her students <laughs> um, what is the sign of civilization? And so her students had like this idea like, oh, it could be maybe being too able to write stuff down or to have some special tool and her idea of what makes civilization is different and her answer is is to find a healed thigh bone a, a healed femur why because to heal a femur takes six weeks six weeks in which other humans have to take care of you if you're in nature Having a broken thigh bone, have, having a broken leg means you're at the very risk of dying very fast, being eaten by predators or simply because you cannot get your own food. You cannot just walk around and go to a river, get something to drink. You need other people to take care of you. The earliest findings of such, of such femur bones actually reaches back 15,000 years ago. So yeah, this is the evolutionary idea of why we have loneliness, why loneliness is so important for us humans and our survival. But I think it's also important to look at why people are speaking of a loneliness pandemic these days. Because when you look at the evolution of humankind, how we established our dominance on the planet, our advances in technology, and how we became a more and more connected species, one could, could think that we humans should be more connected than ever, that we are better at connecting through the World Wide Web, through technology than ever, and that we have more access to resources, more abundance than ever. We don't need to be afraid of predators anymore, but we could just spend the time being happy and connected. But quite the opposite is the case. The numbers actually of loneliness are rising more than ever. Just in the last year, there has been a 7% increase of Americans that feel lonely. 7% in just one year. It was actually from the levels 54 to 61 in one year alone. 
um, with showing the even the younger generations are the worst off. Up to 79% of young Americans, the generation set, feel lonely. And also in Europe, in varying degrees, people are feeling lonely between 8 to 55%. So why do we have this increase? Why do we have this problem? So, and one of the reasons is being said, it's urbanization. It's that more and more people live in mega cities where you're anonymous, where you don't speak with your neighbors, where you are singled out or literally living alone. We're also, with every generation, we have less couple bonding and having a relationship like a romantic relationship is one of the best protective factors against loneliness. So we have more single flats, we have less close friends statistically, and we also spend a lot of time in front of screens. And the, I think it's important to note that screens and technology are great to help us connect, especially in times of lockdown when there's no other way available. But the problem is that technology is a sad substitute for real connection because real connection it needs we need to be able to smell the other person we need to be able to actually look into their eyes and that can be a problem where do you look do you look in the web camera do you look on the screen also we need to read the other person's body language people say that only a small percentage about 20 percent of what we actually talk is just our words. There's much more that we talk about in the way we talk with our body language. And technology, for example emails, robs us of all that. So it's a poor substitute, but if that's the only thing that's possible, then it's better than nothing. Other reasons for this pandemic of loneliness is that people work a lot, and tend to sacrifice their relationships, their communities, the time spent with their communities in order to work more. So we have a materialistic world that tends to weigh superficial values more than relationships, than connections, than time spent with family. Then what also can lead to loneliness is of course being of poor health, the Ministry of Loneliness that was established in the UK in 2018 actually has a long list of things that can lead to loneliness. Amongst them are bullying, moving, the end of a relationship, becoming the victim of crime, being um, having a disability, being a refugee, losing your job, experiencing violence at home, not having a home, become the um, victim of discrimination and losing a loved one to grief. These are all moments where a person, situations in life where a person can be propelled in this feeling of loneliness, in this feeling of not belonging and this feeling of disconnection. And the problem is that these things tend, tends to get worse over time because people are lonely, tend to draw back, they tend to get more anxious, especially about social interactions. They often start to get depressed about it, to get sad about feeling this disconnection. And the problem is that friends often see it as a way of being rejected. So they distance it even more. And this leads to more and more negative biases, negative behavioral changes, negative belief systems. So the problem of loneliness just gets worse over time. It's called the snowball effect. In German we have another word. It's called Teufelskreis, which is roughly translated the devil's circle, which shows just that the problem tends to get worse over time and it tends to get worse to get out of it. So this was the first part of the loneliness talk and I'm gonna continue the next time with how loneliness actually affects the human body. 
and the human mind and what impact it has. Thank you.